So if you guys remember, we redid Harrington's room. We inherited his crusty old dresser. It actually wasn't too bad. Super solid, just kind of a modern look. Definitely not our vibe. So we challenged ourselves to give it a farmhouse makeover. So we often talk about DIY paint being minimal or no prep. One of the best things you can do is clean your piece before you get started painting. It's going to help with all those stains and bleed through and things that might come up later through your finish once you've painted it. And the first step on the DIY paint instructions that comes on the can is to clean the piece that you're going to be working on. So really important step. Do it. If you skip that step, don't you be emailing me telling me you had stuff come through your paint that you didn't clean off. Once I got the piece cleaned, I took all the knobs off and took the drawers out to the garage. That way I could fill the old holes because we wanted them all to line up nice and neat along the side. Don't be discouraged. Sometimes you have to fill them more than once to get them nice and smooth. My next step is going to be to paint the base of the stressor. I'm using DIY White Swan and because I have so many flat surfaces, I'm going to be painting with my Paint Pixie Dusty Brush. DIY is all natural and you don't have to do any prep with it. All I did was clean this dresser and I'm putting this coat on there. You will see because it's white and the base is black that I'm getting a little bit of a streaky first coat. But once I put my second coat on, I'll get really good coverage. So I'm painting over the top of latex. We did make sure that any part that was peeling has already been taken off. You can paint over latex, but one thing to keep in mind is that if your latex is peeling off, no amount of good paint is gonna make it stop. So make sure that you get all the peeling paint off. Maybe even give it a light sand if need be. Once I get the paint on there, then I come back before it starts to dry and I just make nice long even strokes instead of stops and starts. It just gives you a more fluid finish. This will have some texture to it because it is a clay based paint. If I wanted no texture strokes or anything, then I would spray it on or I would have to sand in between every coat. I like it to look hand painted, so I'm going for texture. Normally I don't pull out drawers, but these overlap really heavily on the edge of the dresser. So I needed to pull them out so that way I could paint the inside lip here and also so I didn't have like a big fat line where the drawer stopped. So the first coat you wanna do really thin. I'm getting the second coat on here and I'm gonna do it much thicker. You also don't wanna push really hard on the second coat because that's gonna reactivate the coat underneath and you could pull the paint off. You can see that the second coat is giving me really great coverage. I'm not worried about 100% perfect coverage because I'm gonna come back in distress. If you want 100% coverage, I would say that you might have to do a third coat in a few areas. We're coming outside to distress these because I'm using the orbital sander and I don't wanna get dust all over the living room. I've got my mask on, even though this is non-toxic, no VOC, I don't wanna get that paint dust in my lungs, so it's always good to be safe. We're gonna go over the top to smooth it out and around the edges. So I'm gonna be painting these knobs so that way I can stamp them with my knob topper stamp. When I'm painting knobs like this, you could put little toothpicks in them and stick them in foam and paint them. But what I like to do is flip them over, paint the bottoms, so I can hold them like this and paint the bottoms, then flip them over and then carefully paint the tops. I'm using Fairy Chalk Weather in Best Black because this is what I'm gonna be using to do my buffalo stencil on the front of the dresser. Everything's all distressed. I'm just taking a damp cloth, there's hardly any water on this, and just getting the sanding dust off. I'm gonna wipe the whole piece down and the drawers because we're going to be stenciling on this. All right, it's time to do the stenciling. I'm gonna be putting this Buffalo Check stencil on the fronts of these drawer faces, and I'm using Fairy Chalk Mother in Best Black and then the little C stenciling slash wax brush. All right, so I'm just lining this up here as best I can on the drawer face. I'm just gonna use the center of the Buffalo check pattern. Then I'm gonna tape it down over here. 
just real light. And I'll do another one over here. That'll just hold my position there. So I'm just gonna dip my, my little C brush down in there, just barely. I don't want too much on there. And then I'm going to offload it just right here. If you got a towel or a paper towel or something, that'll work too. I'm just gonna do it on the drop cloth. Then I'm gonna bring it up top here. And it's got a little bow because it doesn't fit quite right on the drawer. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna hold it down as I go. Need a little more. Too dry. So I'm just gonna go half over here and then I'll do the other half. and match them up as best I can. Okay, so I've got some DIY and white swan out on the mat here, and I'm just using the brayer to spread it out. I've got my flexi stamper here, some wooden knobs that Jamie painted black earlier. I've got my brayer and some white swan spread out so that it's nice and thin. I'm gonna center this. This is just the stamp I chose. It just We're gonna go with a little house on this to go with the buffalo check. You guys have seen me use this in live videos if you've been following along the last couple days. I'm poking it out just a little bit from the backside so that I make sure I get nice even coverage over the stamp. That's what it's gonna look like. The nice thing about this Flexi Stamper is it gives you a good repeatable process so that everything matches pretty closely and it's really easy to center your stamp. I'm just marking out on the drawers where I want the new knobs to go. So I'm using my DIY clear wax and my paint pixie wax brush. If you don't have a wax brush, you can use a lint-free rag, but using a wax brush means you use less wax and it makes it much easier for the process. We've got a full video on waxing and I'll have Zeb link that below. I'm just putting it on in a circular motion to get it on my piece. I'm also waxing the knobs because they were not sealed. And then once I get the wax on the piece, then I'll do some long strokes to even it out. Anytime I can wax white furniture, I like to wax it because wax is less likely to bring out bleed through the way that a liquid top coat would. It's also really easy to do inside and you don't have to worry about brush strokes. Once you buff this, it's gonna be a nice smooth finish. I feel like this was a really fun do-over that challenged us to take a mid-century modern dresser that was painted black with awful hardware and really give it a farmhouse vibe. And I think the trick is the knobs and the stencil because just painting this white and distressing it wouldn't have given it enough farmhouse charm to overcome some of its mid-century modern like beginnings. When I was stenciling it, you'll notice on the top that the pattern is inverted Sometimes you mess up on purpose if you don't like getting the job. <laughs> I'm kidding, it was a total accident. I like to mess up on our videos so that you guys can know what, what not to do. I'm not gonna call it a mess up because <laughs> it's going to the shop like this. I think it looks fine. If you're getting an eye twitch because this side of the pattern is different than this side of the pattern, I'm with you. I feel it also. But it still looks pretty cool and it's not super noticeable. A lot of people might not even notice if I hadn't pointed it out. The knobs are amazing. I'm really excited to play a little bit more. There is a little bit of a trick to using paint. When you're using the knob topper stamp, if you're using paint, make sure that you pick a design that's not super intricate, because if it's very detailed, the paint tends to get a little thick around the edges and you'll lose the detail. So that's when you would want to use ink. But in this case, this little house worked out just fine. 
To get all the supplies that we use to achieve this look, go to jamierayvintage.com. Here's a list of the supplies we use. We use DIY White Swan. We used Fairy Chalk Mother in Best Black. We used the IOD Knob Topper Stamp along with a Flexi Stamper, and then we used our Buffalo Plaid Stencil. For brushes, we used the Paint Pixie Dusty to start off with. We did our stenciling with, we used a lot of brushes. We yeah. used our stenciling with our little C brush, which can also be used as a waxer. Then to apply the paint on the stamp, we used our brayer, and then we finished it off with our Paint Pixie Wax Brush and the Paint Pixie Buff. Phew! You can pick all of those up at jamierayvintage.com. So if you like buffalo plaid or you have a friend that likes buffalo plaid, share this video to help them get their fix. And if you don't like buffalo plaid or your friend doesn't like buffalo plaid, share this video to tease them. Just kidding. <laughs> we need your comments below. Do you guys think that this was an update from the black or should we have stuck with the mid-century vibes that we started with? Be sure to give us a thumbs up and subscribe to Jamie Ray Vintage for more DIY.